In this short tutorial, you will learn about writing a kit in Mathematica exactly the way a professional programmer does. We know from the basics of our quantum mechanics that kit is an element of a Hilbert space. In Hilbert spaces or vector spaces, therefore, kit can be written in the form of a column matrix where the number of rows of the column matrix represent the dimensions of a Hilbert space. So for every dimension, for every different space, we would have different number of rows of a given kit in a column matrix. So first I would like to begin by writing the basis vectors of a Hilbert space. The basis vectors of a Hilbert space are usually written in the form of 0 k, 1 k, 2 k, depending upon the dimensionality of the Hilbert space. Uh, however, to understand and follow the procedure easily, I would like to begin by writing the kits first for two-dimensional Hilbert space, which we call it a qubit. So let me begin from a naive approach for the beginners and then move toward an advanced level for those who already understand Mathematica. I have already developed the program but would like to run and explain it step by step so that those who just begins to learn Mathematica should uh, be able to follow the procedure. So the two basis vector for a qubit can be written in the form of a two rows column matrices. One basis vector is called kit zero and I have written it as a list of lists where the first subclass gives the first row and the second subclass gives the second row and similarly kit one I have written as a list of subclass. The only difference between the two is the switching of entry one. In order to see whether these kits currently represent the best vectors in the form of a column matrix. So I would like to invoke the matrix command and run it and I have the column matrix with one in the first row and zero in the second row. Similarly, if I run the second kit, I get this matrix where the entry in the second row is not one. Okay, there's, there's the way a beginner would write a kit. Now let us move to a little advanced level. Well, here I have defined a function with a single argument j and I have put a subscript. This subscript uh, defines the function and this notation with colons followed by an equal sign uh, delay the output of the function. And then I have invoked the table command and within the table I have written Dirac delta function and for Dirac delta function the command in Mathematica is chronicle delta where I have included two entries into the argument of chronic delta function, j and k. Now, this argument, th this function will give me 1 for j equal to k and will give me 0 for j not equal to k, where the k is a running parameter taking values from 0 to some upper value. If, if I set the upper limit of k to 1, this function then gives the basis vector of a two-dimensional Hilbert space. To see this, let me set the argument to zero and run it. I get the same basis, ve basis vector as obtained previously. Similarly, if I insert the argument as one, I'll get the other basis vector for uh, the qubit, for, for the space of a qubit. And if I change the upper limit of k from 1 to 2 and run it, then I would have a column matrix with three rows, means this defines the, this defines the basis vector of a three-dimensional Hilbert space. Changing the values in the argument from 0 to 1 and to 2 will reproduce the basis vector of a three-dimensional Hilbert space, which we generally call it a Q-chit. For example, if I set it to four, then I would have a kit with four rows, a column matrix with four rows. Okay, 
this is one way to define the kit, but there is a limitation for every for every helper space with different dimension, I have to adjust the upper limit of J. In order to uh, get rid of this problem, I want to define it in another way by defining a function with two arguments, where the first argument will give us a particular kit and the second argument will fix the upper level of K, which I have written over here. So this is another way of writing a kit without bounding yourself to this restriction. Now, if I replace the first entry with zero and the second entry with one, it fixes the dimension of the helper space to two. And then I will have If I run it now, I will have the kit for a qubit. And if I change this to 2, I would have a kit, the basis vector of a cube trait. And if I change the 0 to 1, then I have the second kit. And 1 to 2, I have the third kit of the helper space. So, so in this way, you can write the basis vectors of the helper space of a, for a system. Can we use this form of the kit to construct a superposition state for a given system of a given dimensions? Yes, that we can do. But for that purpose, we have to invoke the sum command. And let's see how it works. Here I have rewritten the same kit, but with different indices now with m and k these are dummy indices and i can change these value anytime without affecting the fat of the function and i have multiplied the kit with a number a m this number and fit represent the probability amplitudes and I have invoked the sum command, have put the whole of this into the argument of sum command, and it is sum over the kit m running to k, where k gives me the dimension. So I have, for this purpose, I have included k into the argument of function psi. If I want to write superposition state for any dimension, I just need to change the value of this argument to that corresponding dimension. For example, in the present case, I have set that to 1 and setting it to 1 will give me the superposition state for a qubit. So if I run this function and then I run this one, I will get the superposition state of a qubit. We are a naught and a one are the probability amplitudes. If I change the argument of function psi from one to two, I will have a superposition state for a Q trait. I can write the maximal superposition state by defining the values of the kit, and that I can do by invoking the replace command. The replace command invokes through a forward backslash followed by a dot. And if I want to replace the value of many variable, then I have to construct a list. And here I want to give the values to the probability amplitude and that the probability amplitude L mod goes to 1 divided by 2. And similarly, the probability amplitude 1 goes to 1 divided by 2, closing the list and just setting this to the space of qubit this is the maximal superposition state and if i want to write the maximal superposition state for qubit i will change the argument from one to two and the maximal superposition of qubit is given by setting the probability amplitudes to 1 by 3. So I set this to 1 by 3 and I'll get the maximal superposition state of a Q trait. 
So this way you can write a generic state for any dimensional Hilbert space by using this form of the kit.